Trajan, a game by Stefan Feld, a game that I believe has been pretty successful. Certainly there has been a lot of talking about it. There's a lot of information available on this game on Board Game Geek. There already are pages of video reviews, video reviews only. I haven't even checked to see how many reviews are out there. So a game that a lot of people have already shared opinions about. So the question is, what am I doing here? What am I doing telling about this game when there probably are people that are much more qualified than I am to tell about this game? Well, maybe this is precisely the point. What I can add here is the new perspective of the unbeliever, the perspective of the Eurosceptic, uh, of somebody who does not usually play this type of game, somebody who usually plays uh, war games or thematic games. And when I take a departure from those, usually it is just to uh, take a light diversion with some cute quick filler. I usually do not play this this type of games, games with the type of feel of design philosophy behind that Trajan has. So what happens when a war gamer, thematic gamer, faces the challenge of playing Stefan Feld's Trajan? Well, bear with me as I tell you about the main mechanics of the game and then we'll go back to this point in the conclusions of my video. Each player receives a display such as this one, and I will tell you about it in a second. At the beginning of the game, each player also receives a bonus tile, which is randomly drawn from a bag. The bonus tile indicates advantages that you may be able to receive during final scoring. For example, the player that controls this tile will get three extra victory points at the end of the game for each wine tile that he controls and three victory points for each fish tile that he controls. Those are commodities that can be acquired during the game. To the main display now, the main display has an area where you will place tiles that you collect during the game and that indicate advantages and resources that you have taken control of. Here you have an area where you place little little people, your Oompa Loompas. These are people that you will deploy on the board during the game. And you can pretty much turn them into workers or soldiers that will work for you. But this is clearly the main attraction of the board, the circle of six Mancala dishes and with 12 cylinders of different colors. Also, uh, each ditch is associated with a space that may have a Trajan tile in it. You place three of them around your circle of dishes at the beginning of the game. These tiles will grant you oops, <laughs> different advantages depending on the symbol on the tile. You also have a Trajan arch there, but I'll explain later what that is for. Now, the game may look a little daunting at first because of the very high number of options that you have each turn, but the core idea is very simple. When it is your turn, you must select one of your dishes, you must pick up all of the cylinders that are in that dish, and you must place them in other dishes, moving uh, clockwise and dropping one per dish. The last dish in which you drop a cylinder, in that case would be that one, is your, let's call it your active dish. Now, the cylinders in your active dish, after you moved your cylinders, may match the colors indicated on the treasure tile that is there, if there is a treasure tile like it happened here, yellow and light blue. If you manage to do that, that is to match the colors of a Trajan tile in your active dish, then you can pick up the tile, you score the amount of victory points indicated on the tile, and you get the benefit indicated by the semi-abstract illustration on the tile. But this will not always happen. In most cases, you simply move your cylinders around and after you activate one of your dishes, that is after you're done dropping your cylinders, the active dish, the last dish in which you dropped a cylinder, indicates the action that you're allowed to take that turn. Each dish corresponds to an action indicated by the symbol that you see here. Most of these actions take place on the board, so I will need to share the main board to tell you about those. One actually does take place here on the display. It is the Trajan action that allows you to select a new Trajan tile, 
to place it in the location in which your Trajan Arch is and then you move your Trajan Arch to the next available spot around your circle of dishes. So basically the Trajan Arch indicates the position of the next Trajan tile that you will receive in the game. And this really is the core idea of the game. Select a dish, move your cylinders, score a tile whenever you can, and then take advantage of the action in the dish that you selected by moving your cylinders. This is the board of the game, which is a mounted board. It looks nice enough to me. And what's most important, it really does a good job of presenting the necessary information, organizing a lot of different tiles in different areas that are all easy to use. I find it to be a very functional map. I wanted to give you a general look of the map, also of setup. This is how the board will look like at setup. Now let's talk about the specifics. Here we have an area of the board which is used to keep track of time. The game lasts four quarters and you have these tiles to help you remember the quarter in which the game is. For example, here we would be at the second quarter. Each time that a player takes a turn and takes an action on their Mancala circle, the player will move cylinders by a certain amount of circles. As I showed you earlier, for example, earlier I, sh I moved two cylinders and that means that I moved by two dishes. Each time the player takes a turn, the spawn here is moved by the number of dishes by which one moved, or if you want to see it as the number of cylinders that you picked up, it is the same. So for example, next turn my opponent moves a single cylinder, and then the following player moves five, one, two, three, four, five. So this pawn here will keep going around this track. And there's different tracks, uh, and you use the track that is appropriate for the number of players that are playing the game. Each time that the pawn reaches the starting point, you draw a tile from this pile here, you reveal it face up, and that tile indicates the type of resource that the people of Rome are demanding from their leaders. That means that this is a resource that the players must try to collect during the present quarter, because at the end of the quarter they will need to present that resource. If they don't have it, they lose victory points. So then the pawn keeps going around for a second time and a third time. When the pawn goes around the fourth time, completes its fourth uh, lap of the track, then the quarter is over. At that point you score the quarter and what happens is that first the players present the resources that they have and they pay the penalty for not having them in case they don't. During the scoring at the end of a quarter you also uh, look at the uh, Senate track and you see who is the player with most votes. During the game, every time that a player takes the Senate action, the player advances his pawn on the Senate track by one space. The player immediately scores the number of victory points indicated on the track in which you just moved, and you also collect the votes that are indicated under that. There are also other ways of collecting votes, uh, for example, by collecting tiles from uh, several areas of the board. There are different ways in which those tiles can be collected, but at the end of a quarter, you put together all of the votes that everybody has, the player with the highest amount of votes, uh, gets to choose one of the two bonus tiles that are placed there at the beginning of each quarter you place there the bonus tiles that will be the prize for the end of the quarter at the end of the quarter the player grabs the tile that he chooses the second player with the second highest amount of votes gets the second tile but doesn't get the golden side flips the tile and gets the silver side which usually means that you get the same advantage but simply a lower amount of points for that advantage and again these bonus tiles are used during final scoring you continue like this quarter after quarter replacing <coughs> resources that the people want uh, trying to make your fortune in rome 
and paying penalties for disappointing the people, you continue like this until the end of the fourth quarter. When that is over, then you proceed to final scoring. And after that, the player with the highest amount of points is the winner. I told you about some of the actions already. I told you about the Senate action and the Trajan action. Let me show you more actions. Moving cylinders on your Mancala circle, you may select the forum action. In that case, you simply grab one of the tiles that are available in the forum. These will give you resources that can be used to well, pay for the penalty at the end of each quarter, that is to satisfy the requests of the people. There may be tiles that work as wild cards for several types of advantages. Tiles that grant you extra actions, for example, if you have this tile and you select the form action, then you will get an extra form action. You will get to resolve two form actions thanks to that. Construction action. You can use your construction action to move one of your Oompa Loompas from your display to this area here where workers are recruited or you can use your construction action to move one of your people to one of these spaces here, the construction area. As you can see each space corresponds to a tile. You place your little guy there, you grab the tile you score the amount of points indicated there immediately and then you place the tile on your display and the area corresponding to the thing that you have constructed. Now see that there are action symbols there because when you grab a construction tile of a type that you do not have yet you also immediately get an extra free action, the one corresponding to the tile that you grab. I place that marker there I get a free Trajan action immediately. That only applies to the first style of each type. So there's an advantage in getting as many types of tile as possible because you get a lot of extra actions. However, during final scoring there are a lot of victory points that can be uh, gained by collecting sets of the same type of construction tile. So the, that is the trade-off. The first of your guys that you put in the construction area, you can put it wherever you want. From that moment on, each time that you deploy a new worker in the construction area, you have to deploy it adjacent to one of your previous workers. So actually there's a little bit of spatial strategy here, players getting in each other's way, cutting off possibilities of developing construction lines. Interesting stuff going on there. Military action doesn't mean exactly that this game can be played as a war game, but it does mean that you can spend a lot of resources in your military pursuits. At the beginning of the game you have a soldier there in the camp, that is called the camp, and your military leader, which actually pretty much represents your army. For a military action you can place one of your people in the camp, or you can spend your military action to move your leader to an adjacent location, either an adjacent location in on that map or following these dotted lines here. When you move the leader to an area that has a resource, the leader grabs the resource, well, you grab the resource, and that's great. You add it to your display. You can also spend a military action to move one of your soldiers from your camp to the area where the leader is. Uh, I see this mainly as uh, the uh, the army dropping off legionnaires to found colonies and when you add one of your little people to one of these areas you score the victory points that are indicated there. So as you can see as you progress exploring and conquering there, uh, there's some good stuff to be gained. You may get there and you grab a resource which is always cool and then with a military action you move somebody there and you score 10 points right there. Pretty neat. Each player in the game will also have a hand of commodity cards which are used for the seaport action. This one. When you take the seaport action you can draw two commodity cards from the draw pile and then you can choose one and discard one. There are also two discard piles that are face up and you can spend your seaport action to pick up the card on top of one of the two discard piles instead of drawing from the draw pile. You can spend your draw action 
to put cards down face up in front of you, one or two of them, and then you can draw replacements or you can ship commodities. When you're shipping commodities, that is when you're using your seaport action to ship commodities, you choose one of the three ships that are available there and you score the amount of points that is indicated by the ship you selected depending on the cards that you can present at that time. For example, if you choose this ship here, you will get uh, uh, points for each card that you have in your hand that is different from another card. For example, I could play these four cards here. They're all different from one another. I score eight points for four cards. After you ship uh, with a ship, you flip it and now the ship is less valuable. Other players that take that same action with that ship in that quarter will score less points for the same action. Then you have a ship that allows you to score cards that are identical to one another. And then you have one that allows you to score cards for couples, uh, for, for pairs. For example, here I have two fish and two rings. This is what I have in my hand. I take the seaport action, I select this ship here, then I score 10 points for two pairs that are different from one another. And again, I make things less profitable for the opponent. This is a game that, from the point of view of Eurogaming, is a pretty heavy one, is a pretty meaty one. Uh, but playing this game and learning this game, I realized actually how subjective or relative such definitions can be. Uh, for example, these days I'm rereading the manual for the standard combat uh, system by M MMP. It is a system that has been designed specifically to be more approachable, easier to learn than other systems. Systems, and that one I find much more complicated than this. That is a simple war game, can be uh, more intricate, uh, can have more things that you need to remember than a heavy Euro game. And maybe this is why I actually was able to jump into the game to absorb the rules uh, faster than I expect. That I was a little scared at first, but uh, it wasn't really a problem for me to learn the rules. However, we should not confuse ease of learning the rules with ability uh, to, to figure out what to do with those rules and to play the game effectively. Because in that, in that regard, I really have a disadvantage when playing against my, my Euro gaming friends. They can just mop the floor with my cute Italian face. It takes me a long time to figure out how to play effectively several games to come out second to last, which to me is a great result already, and maybe one day even second. But luckily enough, uh, winning a game is not the only reason why I play a game. Uh, why, why I play games is, is to experience the design, to perceive a certain, a certain music of the design, a certain system of proportions and dynamic interactions that the, the design can, can generate uh, with the right group, even when you're not doing particularly well. And I definitely had this experience here. I, I could hear that music of design in here, of parts of the design, of mechanics of the design, uh, coming together even from very different directions. This is a game that has many different things, from uh, set collecting to collecting votes, uh, taking control of specific areas and almost drawing patterns on the board to cut off other players from opportunities. Mancal, of course, Mancal is right there. So many different things that, however, I found that, that managed to come together well in a surprising, surprisingly organic way to me. Uh, I really enjoyed playing the design. I really enjoyed feeling overwhelmed by the possibilities, overwhelmed by the by the opportunities. Of about all the choices that I have that I have when I play the game, and yet at the same time feeling that things make sense. I like the fact that you can do so many things here, but you will never be able to do everything. 
you are concentrating on military pursuits and constructions, well, great for you. Probably you're neglecting collecting the needs, uh, the, the goods that the people need. You will lose points there. You collect those. Maybe you're not scoring other points. You cannot do everything. And even though the game may look a little solipsistic at first because you spend so much time looking down on your display, looking at those darn cylinders and figuring out ways to make them do what you want them to do. At the same time, then what happens on the board is extremely interactive, uh, especially when it comes to other players grabbing things before you do. Resources are limited. Some resources are good only for the first player that gets there. Timing is very important. Things like this, like these, really uh, add flavor to the game and give a certain breath to what otherwise could be a fairly dry and cerebral puzzle. To me, this is a game that is definitely involving, um, that leaves me tired at the end, but not exhausted, uh, not with that headache, sense of brain burn like I have sometimes uh, when I play games such as Mage Knight. Uh, tired because the game was so immersive, but really rewarded no matter how the game ended, really fulfilled. This is a game that I like very much. Take it from somebody who does not usually play your games, who may play games that are more complicated than this one and much longer, but also occasionally games that are lighter and easier. In any case, games with a very different perspective, still I was able to connect to this design very well and quite deeply. I got to tell you, when it comes to Euro games, especially Euro games that are meaty, that are uh, deep, this is one of my favorite ones. Definitely in my top, say, five of this type of game. Trajan, a game that I enjoyed very much, a game that even no Euro gamers may enjoy, if you can believe that. If you're the one person in the world that hasn't tried this game yet, well, give it a try. You may be surprised.